Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So last week, as I was not well, I was not able to take these sessions. This week, it might happen that some of the sessions might get skipped. So please bear with me. Uh, as soon as a new session will come up, you will be notified about the same on Telegram. Uh, I'll make sure that as soon as I get back well, I'll make all the sessions on time. Till then, just stay updated on Telegram where you'll be notified with the every new session coming up. So, uh, before moving on to the very first question, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our Telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our latest videos, and you can also post your queries over here. So, now, before moving on to the first question, I would like to tell you that uh, today's session is related to a very important notification from RBI's website where RBI talked about some instructions to enhance the governance of banks. So especially the private sector banks need a lot of improved governance and these guidelines are applicable to them. So in today's session, we'll cover only this topic because it's a, it's a detailed topic. All the four questions which have been framed, they have been framed keeping in mind these instructions which RBI has recently come up with. So we'll first cover the entire set of instructions, entire set of guidelines and then we'll discuss the questions. So what does corporate governance mean? Why is uh, the RBI focusing a lot on enhancing the governance of the banks? See, corporate governance, it is about improving on the way any firm is basically directed or controlled. Here we are talking about the banks. So we need to make sure that banks are governed in a more proper manner. We need to make sure that there are proper rules, regulations, processes, uh, procedures in place so that uh, these banks are more better directed or more better managed or controlled. Okay. Now there are different stakeholders. There is management, there is board, there are shareholders. So proper relationships need to be maintained. They need to be properly governed so that banks continue to function in an efficient manner. That's why RBI somehow comes up with some of the other directions in order to improve the governance of these banks. So what is new this time? So if I talk about these guidelines, their focus area is on the uh, on the uh, board that who is going to chair the meeting of the board when these meetings should be held what's the quorum for the meeting then they talk about different committees like audit committee risk management committee so who will chair the meetings of such committees then when the meetings should be held what should be the quorum other than that there are different non-executive directors there are whole time directors so What's the maximum age limit for them? What is the maximum tenure with which they can work in a bank? What should be the remuneration of such directors? So all those guidelines have been provided in this very notification. Why has RBI come up with this notification? RBI wants to enhance the governance of banks. So through this notification, the focus is on the private sector banks. Other public sector banks or many different kinds of banks have yet not been covered, but uh, at least a step has been taken by RBI to enhance the go governance of these private sector banks. So first we'll discuss that to which banks these guidelines are applicable and then we'll move on to these guidelines. So if I talk about the applicability, then these guidelines are applicable to all private sector banks. Jitne bhi private sector banks hai, including your small finance banks, all of them are covered under the ambit of these directions which I'll be discussing further. Now talking about your foreign banks. So all foreign banks are not covered under this. In India, the banks could function as a foreign bank in the form of a wholly owned subsidiary or it can be in the form of branches as well. Okay, so branches ke through jo foreign banks operate kar rahe hai, these guidelines are not applicable to them but to only those foreign banks which are operating by way of wholly owned subsidiary. Okay, so only those foreign banks will be covered under these gui guidelines who are wholly owned subsidiaries. Then if I talk about some other nationalized bank like 
SBI. So SBI and other nationalized banks will be covered under these guidelines, provided that whatever statutes, whatever laws are governing those banks, they are not con inconsistent with these guidelines. जो भी आपके nationalized banks हैं, उनकी अपने कुछ statutes होंगे जो इन्हें govern करते हैं. ओके तो जितने हद तक ये आपकी गाइडलाइंस इनकंसिस्टेंट नहीं है उन गाइडलाइंस से देन टू दैट एक्सटेंट दीज गाइडलाइंस विल बी एप्लीकेबल टू एसबीआई एंड सच नेशनलाइज्ड बैंक्स एज वेल फर्दर टॉकिंग अबाउट द रीजनल रूरल बैंक्स और द लोकल एरिया बैंक्स और द पेमेंट बैंक्स उनको ये गाइडलाइंस एज ऑफ नाउ एप्लीकेबल नहीं है आरबीआई इज गोइंग टू कम अप विद सेपरेट नोटिफिकेशन फॉर एनहांसिंग द गवर्नेंस ऑफ सच बैंक्स so as of now these guidelines are covering what these guidelines are going to cover your all private sector banks your wholly owned subsidiary of foreign banks and your spi and the nationalized banks so these are the applicability areas so now let's move ahead further the very first thing which has been talked about in these directions is about the board so who is going to be the chairperson of that board आपके बैंक का एक बोर्ड होगा एक बोर्ड ऑफ डायरेक्टर्स होता है सो हु इज गोइंग टू चेयर दैट बोर्ड द चेयर पर्सन ऑफ दैट बोर्ड शुड बी एन इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर नाउ हेयर कम्स इनटू द पिक्चर द रोल ऑफ द इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर्स सो लेट मी डिस्कस फ्यू इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट्स विद यू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी हैव एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर्स ओके एंड देन द नॉन एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर्स सो लेट अस डिस्कस व्हाट इज द बेसिक डिफरेंस बिटवीन द टू If I talk about your executive directors, there are some directors who will be involved in the day-to-day -day functioning of your banks, जो उसके day-to-day work से deal कर रहे हैं. They are your executive director. They are involved in the daily affairs of the bank. But there are some directors who will not be involved in the daily function functioning of the banks, but still. they have a really important role to play like they will be making overall plans for your bank they will be making overall policies so such people who are not involved in day to day functioning are your non executive directors kuch non executive directors hone chahiye aapke board mein we should have non executive directors so that ek unbiased sa independent judgment wo de sake okay because they are not involved in day to day functioning they are not aware about your daily Uh, chores of the bank, so they can give a better policy plan. Okay, that's the reason why we need to have a large proportion of non-executive directors in the board. Now, talking about the independent directors, independent directors are also your non-executive directors. That is, they are not involved in day-to-day -day functioning. Moreover, they are independent means they are not at all related to your business or to your bank. so they are not related to any promoter of the bank to the shareholder to any person okay unki koi direct relationship nahi hai aapke bank se they are independent they are not involved in day to day functioning so what advantage is it going to give it is going to provide you with a unbiased decision and independent judgment so if such a person who is not related to your daily affairs of the business or of the bank if he is acting as a chair person of the board his decision will not at all be biased in the favor of your bank so he can give a independent judgment that is why we need to, that independent directors should be there on the board or on the uh, or they should be involved majorly in different meetings of the board so who is going to be the chairman of the board as per these directions the chairman of the board should be an independent director now there might be a case that a board meeting is going on and the chairman is not present due to some reason then in that case any other independent director can chair such meetings so these two guidelines have been provided by rbi now talking about the quorum of the meetings kitne log present hone chahiye meeting mein so if a uh, the board of such bank is conducting a meeting then at least three directors or one third of the total strength whichever is higher that number of directors should be present in a meeting okay One third of the total strength होनी चाहिए, otherwise three. So whichever is higher, उतने directors एक meeting में होने चाहिए. Now out of this number, at least half of the directors who are attending the meeting, they should be independent directors. So again comes into picture the role which the independent directors play. They can give an independent judgment. That is why we need at least half of the directors in the meeting to be. independent directors so if more number of independent directors are present it can help in enhancing the governance of the 
banks because they can give a better judgment in the favor of the banks so this was about the meetings of the board now let us move ahead to the committees so this is second very important part of the uh, this very notification so first set covered the board who is going to chair the board when the board meetings should be held this set of directions now talk about different committees so they have covered three committees so for simplification i have divided these committees into three parts so three types of directions rbi has come up with firstly it talks about who can be the member of this committee secondly it talks about who is going to chair the committees and thirdly it talks about when the meeting should be held what should be the quorum so maine three parts mein divide kar diya hai i have created this chart where i have covered for all the three committees the members the chair and the meetings part so with this you will be easily you will easily be able to uh, recall that what actually they are talking about through this notification so if i talk about the audit committee and uh, if i talk about its membership so who can be the member of an audit committee so as per the guidelines only non executive directors can be the member of this audit committee what is does the audit committee do see we need to make sure that whatever financial statements the organization is preparing it is timely notifying people about the same okay timely disclosure of financial information is made correct information is provided proper audit of the bank is carried out okay audit committee will deal with the appointment of the auditors their monitoring control their remuneration so all that work is dealt by audit committee so who should be the members of such committee the non executive directors who are not involved in day to day functioning taki aapka audit jo hai wo biased na ho ek unbiased decisions le aapki committee that's the reason we need more of the non executive directors then all the members of this committee should be able to understand the financial statements obviously audit committee ka work kya hai to make sure that financial statements are disclosed properly correct information is provided so if the members who of this committee are themselves not aware about financial statements how will they make sure that correct information is being portrayed further that's the reason that all members should be non executive and they should be financially literate having the ability to understand the financial statements other than that this committee should also have at least one member who has a professional expertise in financial accounting or financial management to ek member aisa hona chahiye who has a professional experience with respect to financial accounting and financial management firm ke finances mein jiske paas ek professional qualification ho aisa ek member hona chahiye further the chair of the board should not be a member of acb we just discuss that a board will have a chairperson so whosoever is the chairperson of that board okay he shall not be a member of this committee board ka chairperson is committee ka member bhi nahi hona chahiye so this was about the membership of audit committee now talking about who can chair the meetings of this audit committee board so the meetings of this committee will be chaired by an independent director so iska jo chairperson hai wo bhi ek independent director hona chahiye now the one who is chairing the acb shall not chair any other committee so jo bhi is committee ka chairperson hai wo kisi aur committee ka chairperson nahi hona chahiye wo board ka bhi chairperson nahi hona chahiye and he shall also not be a member of any committee of the board which sanctions the credit exposure so koi bhi credit ka agar sanction karne wali committee hai उसका मेंबर भी आपका एसीबी का चेयरपर्सन नहीं होना चाहिए सो द चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एसीबी शुड बी एन इंडिपेंडेंट डायरेक्टर हु इज नॉट अ मेंबर ऑफ द क्रेडिट सैंक्शनिंग कमिटीज और हु शुड नॉट बी अ चेयरपर्सन ऑफ एनी अदर कमिटी ऑल राइट नाउ इफ आई टॉक अबाउट द मेंबरशिप और सॉरी अबाउट द मीटिंग्स देन द मीटिंग्स शुड बी हेल्ड एटलीस्ट वंस अ क्वार्टर क्वार्टर में एक बार इस कमिटी की मीटिंग होनी चाहिए what is the quorum for such meetings at least 3 members should be there in a meeting and out of these 3 members at least 2/3 of the members should be independent directors so meetings may be independent directors ka role bahut important hai the meetings of acb shall be chaired by as i told you an independent director who will not chair any other committee or the board so board ka chairperson kisi aur committee ka chairperson acb ka chairperson nahi ho sakta 
only an independent director who is not chairing any other board can chair the audit committee board all right so this is about audit committee now let us move ahead to the risk management committee now there are different risky activities which a business needs to undertake a bank needs to undertake bank needs to also undertake different strategies to better deal with the risks to better manage the risk so that is the role of the risk management committee so now we will discuss that who can be a member who can chair such committee and what is the structure of meetings so similar way if i talk about the risk management committee here we should have a majority of non executive directors audit committee mein kya tha audit committee mein all members were non executive here we need a majority of non executive directors all right other than that the chair of the board may be a member of rmcb only if he has a risk management expertise jo board ka chair person tha he can be a member of this risk management committee provided he fulfills one condition that is he had a risk management expertise so is committee mein wo ho sakta hai board ka chair person if he is having the ability to manage the risk uske paas risk management area mein ek expertise hai then he that uh, board chair person can be a member of this committee now who can chair such committee talking about the risk management committee the chair person should be an independent director so again only an independent director can chair this meeting moreover he should be one who shall not be the chair of the board or any other board so yahan pe bhi wahi condition hai independent director can chair the risk management committee but if there is any independent director who is chairing the board or who is chairing any other board committee he is not going to chair such meeting okay independence honi chahiye kisi aur committee ka jo member nahi jo kisi aur committee ka head nahi hai wohi is committee ko head karega that is the difference which needs to be maintained with respect to each and every committee now talking about the meetings so the quorum for the meeting here is also three members but here at least half of the members attending the meeting should be independent and out of them at least one should have the expertise in the risk management sector so if i talk about audit committee there we had two third members independent here we have half of the members as independent and one member should have the expertise in the risk management area all right now as i have already told you the meetings can be chaired by an independent director who will not chair any other board or any other committee of the board now talking about when this meeting can be held for this meeting also every quarter a meeting must be held so this is the criteria for your risk management committee now let us move ahead to the nomination and remuneration committee so this is the third committee with respect to which the guidelines have come up so if i talk about this nomination committee and the nomination and remuneration committee what does this committee do now there are different directors which are appointed there are full time directors there are some executive non executive directors we need to appoint them provide the criteria for their appointment remunerate them so all those things are handled by this committee so who can be the member of this committee only the non executive directors so in audit committee also we had just non executive directors here also we have only non executive directors as the member now who can chair this committee again an independent director can chair such meeting and one who is not the chair of the board he can be a chair of this nomination committee all right talking about the meeting three members must be present at least half of the members should be independent and one shall be the member of your risk management committee so teen members may say half to independent directors hone chahiye and one member should be a one who is the member of the risk management committee all right so this the meetings of this committee will again be chaired by an independent director who is not the chair of the board so yahan se ye criteria hai ki the person should not be a chair of the board and if he is an independent director he can chair this committee talking about the meeting the earlier two committees were supposed to have a meeting once a quarter but this nrc committee it can have a meeting as and when required so yahan quarterly uh, restriction nahi lagayi gayi hai whenever there is a need to conduct a meeting this committee can conduct a meeting so this is the difference between the three committees what uh, are the provisions with respect to that so these banks need to follow all these provisions about this committee now moving ahead 
further rbi talks about the non executive directors i already discussed that the ones who are not involved in day to day working are your non executive directors so what rbi has to say about these non executive directors first of all rbi talks about their maximum age so jo bhi non executive directors hain including jo bhi aapke board ka chairperson hai the maximum age limit has been specified as 75 years so after attaining the age of 75 years a person cannot be a chairperson of the board neither he can be a non executive director of these banks further if i talk about their maximum tenure kitne time tak wo as a director work kar sakte hain so the limit has been specified as 8 years so a person can be a chairperson of the board for 8 years and he can be a non executive director for 8 years but a uh, exception is there okay if uh, the person wants to be reappointed then with rbi approval they can be reappointed but a 3 year cooling period is must so once a person completes his 8 year tenure then after 3 years rbi may again consider him to reappoint him for that position okay but prior approval of rbi will be needed and so some in some case in some specific cases further extension may be granted but 3 saal ka cooling period to required hi hai all right and uh, now if i move ahead further talking about their remuneration so they'll obviously uh, they are attending the meetings they are conducting the work for that they will get some fee some expenses which they are incurring in the meeting moreover as per the work they are doing the extent of their qualification based on that they will get some fixed remuneration so the uh, some remuneration has been decided whatever remuneration has been decided for he or non executive directors it should not exceed 20 lakh per annum but 20 lakh per annum chairperson of the board ke liye limit nahi hai baki non executive directors ke liye this limit has been specified with respect to remuneration now let us move ahead further we talked about the non executive directors that 8 years plus 3 year cooling period and 75 years was the limit for them now if i talk about the other types of directors that like different whole time directors are there your md ceo is there who is involved in your day to day working what is the tenure for them so if i talk about your managing director or your ceo he can be in that position for a period not exceeding 15 years so unke liye limit lagayi gayi hai 15 years ki after 15 years if they you want to further make them eligible eligible for reappointment then rbi permission is needed and cooling period of 3 years is needed so after completing 15 years if it is necessary after a gap of 3 years that person might be reappointed at this post all right but during this 3 year cooling off period wo jo person hai he should not at all be related to bank in any way directly indirectly kisi bhi way mein wo related nahi hona chahiye in that case RBI subject to certain conditions may permit the reappointment okay otherwise 15 years is the maximum tenure but if that person who is the MD CEO he is also the major shareholder of that bank wo us bank ka promoter ya shareholder bhi hai then the limit is not 15 but 12 years okay uh, so that then in that case the limit is less but this can be increased to 15 years with the RBI approval so that is the maximum tenure which has been specified other than that upper age limit has also been specified so a person can be a md a ceo up till the age of 70 years so waha pe non executive directors ki age thi 75 here we have 70 years for your md and ceo other than that uh, for retirement a lower age can be set up by the boards of the banks as per their discretion so these are the limits which have been specified by rbi now these guidelines came up on 26th april okay but it's not that banks have to apply them the day that this notification came a time frame has been given that the banks can uh, uh, use, uh, comply with these provisions by 1st of october 2021 now there might be some problems in transition what can be that problem okay rbi has said that you should not ex your age limit should not exceed 75 years or your age limit not exceed 70 years ya aap 15 years se zyada is post pe nahi ho sakte 
it might happen that when the rbi came up with these directions some a person was there who has already surpassed that limit so what can happen in that case okay to usme rbi ne approval de diya hai kuch exceptions de di hai the chair of the board who was not an independent director when this circular came up he will be allowed to complete his current term as the chair as already approved by rbi so kisi bank ka agar koi aisa board ka chair person tha who was not an independent director but he was already appointed so till the time frame his tenure has not ended he can continue his work once that tenure will end further that extension won't be allowed other than that there might be some banks whose md ceo have already completed this age group of 12 or 15 years so suppose uh, if there is some person whose tenure has already started he has already been appointed as an md till say 2022 so he can continue till that he can continue his post but ab jo bhi naya md ya ceo appoint hoga they need to abide by the new guidelines so previously jo already appoint ho chuke hain unke liye rbi ne exception de di hai i'll cover one of the questions where i'll talk about the uday kotak case so there uh, these things will be more clearer to you so these were the directions which the banks have to abide by all right all these things having independent director having more of non executive director conducting meetings time to time making sure that the board of these committees is independent all this will help to enhance the governance of the banks okay that's the reason why rbi has come up with these guidelines so now let's just move on to our questions now so the very first question says that rbi came up with some directions on 26th april which were related to the appointment of directors and constitution of committees of the board in order to ensure better corporate governance in banks so which of the following banks fall under the purview of these directions so because i have already discussed these directions now it should be clear that all private sector banks are covered sbi and nationalized banks are covered but all foreign banks are not covered only wholly owned subsidiaries are covered so answer should be option 1 and 3 that is option c is the answer all right so now let's move on to question number 2 question number 2 says which of the following statements correctly states the provisions applicable to the audit committee as per rbi's latest directions on constitution of committees of the board so they are talking about this direction which i have just discussed so you have to identify the correct statements the first one says audit committee shall comprise only non executive directors so this is correct the meeting of acb shall be chaired by independent director this is also correct and the third one says acb shall meet at least twice a year no they should meet at least once a quarter so this statement is incorrect so only first and second are correct that's why answer is option b see if you are thorough with these guidelines the questions are very easy but if you are not thorough with the guidelines if you are not aware you won't be able to answer them so please just properly understand these guidelines so that you are better able to answer these questions moving on to third question this is the case which i was talking about so the question says uday kotak can continue as md and ceo of kotak kotak mahindra bank until 20 january 2024 after which the company will have to appoint a successor Kotak is the bank's MD for 17 years. As for the new norms, he will not be eligible for reappointment. His tenure will end in 2024, and he is not eligible for reappointment. Which of the following new provisions puts a cap on Kotak's eligibility as MD and CEO? So, what they are trying to say here? They are saying that Kotak has completed 17 years, but he was appointed recently in Jan 2021. He was appointed. for 3 years as the md and ceo to ab wo already appoint ho chuka hai to ab wo 2024 tak ye post hold karke rakh sakta hai so rbi has given that permission but once this period is over further he will not be considered eligible to be reappointed tab inko koi aur naya md ya ceo appoint karna padega so which provision puts a cap on his eligibility i have already told you that the maximum tenure should be 15 years so yahan pe yahi ek condition hai out of the given options which is satisfying this criteria because they are not mentioning whether uday kotak uh, was also the promoter so 13 years wala 
जो प्रोविजन है वो यहाँ एप्लीकेबल होगा कि नहीं सो एज ऑफ नाउ दे आर सींग दैट ही हैज सरपास द लिमिट सो फिफ्टीन ईयर्स की लिमिट सरपास हो गई हो गई है दैट्स द रीजन ही विल नॉट बी कंसिडर्ड फर्दर लेटर ऑन फॉर री अपॉइंटमेंट सो द आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी इन दिस केस नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द लास्ट क्वेश्चन सो एज पर द लेटेस्ट आर बी आई डायरेक्शन टू इंश्योर बेटर गवर्नेंस इन बैंक वॉट एज लिमिट है फॉलोइंग केसेज नाउ वी हैव टू सी द एज लिमिट द अपर एज लिमिट ऑफ एम डी सी ओ और द होल टाइम डायरेक्टर इन प्राइवेट सेक्टर बैंक कंटिन्यूज टू बी डैश एंड मैक्सिमम एज ऑफ नॉन एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर्स कंटिन्यूज टू बी वॉट सो दीज आर द एज लिमिट एज आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू that 70 is the age limit for your md ceo and whole time directors and for non executive directors it is 75 years so this was all for today's session i hope you found this session to be useful i am once again saying it might happen that uh, some sessions might not come up this week but i'll try to uh, be regular in the sessions as soon as i get back well so till then keep learning and uh, i would like to end up this session thank you so much